Welcome back to part two of our NIST CSF series. In video one, we detailed why CISOs love NIST CSF and dove into how the history of the framework played an important part in that. If you haven't seen it, you can check it out in the top right corner now or using the link in the description below. If you'd like to learn more about NIST CSF, SOC2, HIPAA, and more, and understand how security and compliance impacts your business, click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell below. On to business. There's three distinct parts of the NIST cybersecurity framework. The CSF profile, the CSF implementation tiers, and the CSF core. Let's start with the CSF profile. Framework profiles refer to the alignment of your security posture with business requirements, risk tolerance, and the resources of the organization. This can take several forms, whiteboards, Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, etc. But at its crux, the CSF is you understanding where you are versus where you want to be. There's two basic profiles that NIST CSF talks about, current profile and target profile. The current profile indicates the cybersecurity outcomes that are currently being achieved. Basically, where you stand from a cybersecurity standpoint today. The target profile represents the risk management goal of your information security team. That is, where you want to be down the road. The gap between the two determines the work that you'll need to take up in order to be compliant. But how do you determine your target goal, you ask? Well, that brings us to CSF implementation tiers. In simple words, how your organization wants to prepare to manage the risks that it perceives. If you feel like your organization operates in a high-risk environment, you will want to be extra careful with your data. And so you'll choose a target profile that reflects that. There's four implementation tiers in this CSF. Partial, risk-informed, repeatable and adaptive. There's three factors that determine which tier you fall under. One, are you manage your risks? Two, organizational awareness of your risks. And three, external awareness of said risks. Partial is considered the starting point for your CSF journey. You have no formal way of managing the risk. There's not a lot of knowledge in your organization about cybersecurity. And there's little awareness of the supply chain risks of the products that you use or provide. Risk informed is where you see a little more consistency. Risk management practices occur in response to direct threats. There is knowledge about cybersecurity, but maybe not on an organizational level. There is awareness about supply chain risks, but they're not necessarily acted upon. Repeatable is the most generally acceptable tier to be in. You have formal risk management practices that are followed and documented. There is an organization wide focus on cybersecurity. And not only is there awareness about supply chain risks, but there is formal action around it, written agreements, policies, and monitoring. Adaptive is a house in order. It involves having formalized and evolving cybersecurity practices that include learning some past failures, current threats, and future indicators. Cybersecurity is a focus point for leadership the same way as it is for employees and is ingrained in the culture. Your organization uses real-time monitoring to understand and act upon supply chain risks, along with formal and informal action on top of that. So the CSF profile showed you where you stood. The CSF implementation tier showed you where you need to be. It's our time for action. The CSF core. The CSF core consists of five basic functions. They are further broken down into categories, subcategories, and informative references. The first part of the core is identify. It involves understanding all the things that need protection. Your systems, people, assets, data, and capabilities. Two is protect. It involves developing and implementing safeguard to ensure these critical services are not disrupted. Three, detect. It involves implementing strategies to identify any possible cybersecurity event. Four, respond. This deals with implementing processes to take action in the event of a detected cybersecurity incident. And finally, five, recover. Developing and implementing appropriate activities to maintain plans for resilience and to restore any capabilities or services that were impaired during a cybersecurity incident. These five cores break down into 23 categories, with these categories being further subdivided into 108 subcategories. It is important to note that NIST CSF focuses more on the what than the how. So for example, NIST will point out that security training should be undertaken for employees, but will not restrict you on how that should be done. So let's take a look at what the CSF core looks like in action. Let's consider the function protect under which there are several categories, identity management, data security, awareness and training, etc. Clicking into awareness and training, we see various subcategories, making sure users are trained, ensuring privileged users understand their roles, and ensuring third parties like customers and partners are aware of their responsibilities. And for each of these subcategories, there are informative references. Basically, pointers to other frameworks that discuss the subtopic being mentioned. So now that you know what it contains and how it's structured, there's only one thing left, learning how to implement NIST CSF for your organization, which we cover in our next video. You'll find the link to it in the description below. 
and in the playlist on our channel. Like we mentioned earlier, NIST represents a fundamental shift in the world of cybersecurity, moving from moment in time compliances continuous monitoring compliance. The focus and constant visibility, along with the adaptive natures of the controls we've mentioned, means that organizations will also have to shift the way they choose to get compliant. From the old paperwork, human-assisted and manual approach, to a digitized, automated and integrated method of compliance. Sprinto helps companies leverage compliance automation across several frameworks. NIST CSF, SOC, ISO for ISM plus one, and more, so that companies can get compliant faster, easier, and more inexpensively. Continuous monitoring via Sprinto's centralized dashboards means that you stay compliant too, all year round, not just during an audit cycle. To know more, visit Sprinto.com, or book a demo with our NIST experts using the link below.